Hey guys, if you like animating images as much as I do, then you probably know the feeling when you are searching online for a sound effect but you just can't find one that fits or has the right duration. Well those days are over because you can now generate AI sound effects locally on your PC with a tool called AudioCraft Plus and it's super easy to set up and to use. Besides the installation and the basics of the tool, I'd like to show you how to create simple sound effects and a sequence of sound effects as well as to a degree, editing existing sound effects. And if you're interested in how to create the animations from the intro, then I will also briefly show you how that's done at the end of the video. We will be installing AudioCraft Plus through the one-click installer for AI tools named Pinocchio. If you need help installing Pinocchio, or if you want to get an overview of the tool, then check out this video, where I'll show you exactly that. So in the Discovery tab in Pinocchio, we'd install next to AudioCraft Plus, Confirm the name and hit install once again. Once it finishes, we click on done and then on start, which launches the user interface in your web browser. And you can now use the two main components of the tool that allow you to generate music or sounds. I'll show you how to generate music with Music Gen in another video. Since we want to generate sound effects, we'll switch to Audio Gen. For generating single sound effects that are enchained together, you only need those two fields for setting the duration of the effect and for entering the text prompt. We will leave the duration at 10 seconds and generate some rain by clicking on generate. When you are running the tool for the first time, AudioCraft will download some files which you can track in the Pinocchio status window. And here's our output which gets generated as video file with visualizer and also as audio only. And even though you can download the files with this button, you don't have to because all generated files will be stored in this path. Let's listen to the file. If you're not happy with the result, you basically have two options. You can either generate the same prompt again with another seat, or you can tweak the prompt by detailing what you want. And I'll now show you a comparison of both these options. So here's the same prompt, but with different seats. And keep in mind that you can also combine sounds in the editing software and play them at the same time. The negative one means that the seed will always be random and over here you can see which seed was used for the generated file. And here's a comparison of the second technique to get you closer to the sound effect that you desire and that is tweaking the prompt by explaining in more detail what you want to hear. In our example we can just tell it which kind of rain we want. Next, we would generate a sequence of sound effects. This functionality isn't always needed since you can just combine single sounds in any video or audio editing software, but sometimes it can be useful and it works quite well, so let me show you how it's done. Let's assume we want audio for a scene at a music festival where we first hear people cheering, then hear a dog barking, and then lastly, there's some fireworks. We enter a music festival as the global prompt, then set the total number of prompts that we need, which is three, and fill in the three input text fields. And the way this works is that the global prompt is added to each of the other prompts. Now we set the duration of the sequence to 30 seconds and calculate the timings of each prompt. The first prompt will always be 10 seconds long and the overlap will be subtracted from all other prompts besides the final prompt. Let's click Generate and have a listen. And the last technique I want to show you in AudioGen is how you can add sound effects to existing sound files, which again is something that can be done in editing tools as well. First, we go to the Audio tab and then drag our input audio file, which is a thunderstorm, into this field. Then we switch back to the Generation tab, enter our prompt, and hit Generate.
as you could hear and as you can see by looking at the visualization both audio files look and sound pretty much the same except for the last bit and for some reason this isn't easy to reproduce but what always works is when you set a value for either the trim start or the trim end so by setting the trim end to 5 we tell the tool to replace the last 5 seconds with a new sound effect By the way, you can also customize the user interface visually and in the settings tab you have several things that you can tweak. For example, if you set a higher value for the temperature, the output will be more random and diverse while lower values will lead to more deterministic and focused results. If you want more info on the other settings, check the comprehensive wiki which is included in the tool. What's also nice about the tool is that you can just drag an audio file that was created with AudioCraft into the Audio Info tab and you will see the prompt and all settings used for its creation. I will now briefly show you how I animated the images. On iPad, I first cut out all objects that I want to animate in the regular Photos app. You just tap and hold the object, which highlights it, and then you can tap on Share and Save the image, which creates a new image with just that one object. For the background, you can now either simply remove the objects that you want to animate, which can be done in many different apps. Or, you can now, for example, use Motion Lead to use an animated sky background. You just have to highlight any image to get an animated full screen background that you can then export as video. Then you can combine the background, the objects you cut out, and the sound effects together in a video editing tool of your choice. The animation of the objects is usually done with keyframes. And you can also add visual filters to make everything blend together a bit nicer. So there you go, you can now make your own animated images or videos with your own AI sound effects. By the way, I'm experimenting with the software that makes mouse clicks and keyboard inputs visible, which hopefully wasn't too confusing in some parts of the video. I hope you learned something new while watching this video, if you did, please share or like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.